Hi everyone. Hope you're having a lovely day today. And today I'm going to show you how to transform some of these pieces of wood into some lovely signs like these. See what wood you might have in your home somewhere that you could use, or if not, you could go down to the DIY store and get some. Or alternatively, you could go somewhere like Home Bargain, Hobby Lobby or anywhere where they might have some little wooden signs that you can transform yourself. So let's give it a whirl. I'm going to be using the trace and paint method today. So um, we don't need too many materials. And to begin with, just need to see what wood we have. So here I have a selection. You'd be quite surprised what you could make into something beautiful, really. This is obviously a good good chunk of wood we can use. This one here is actually the end of what I used for the welcome sign there. Um, so something like that can turn into something quite beautiful. I'm going to use these two planks of wood today. I'll cut one in half and cut the, the, the next one to the same size. We will also need some sandpaper, some white or grey paint, a, a brush, a fine brush and some ac acrylic paint. I always tend to use black or grey. And some wood glue and the glue gun. Here's my pieces of wood. So first of all, I'm going to glue them together. Ideally, you would just glue them together with the wood glue, but because I like to glue them and have them ready pretty quick, I use the glue gun as well. So if we dab on little patches of the wood glue we can then add in between there the just a small amount of um, glue gun and that will just help keep it stuck so put that on not too much gently push it together and then we put it flat on the flat surface face down and give it a good squeeze and that that glue the hot glue We'll just keep it together and then at a later date the wood glue will hold it together. There we have it, the first two pieces together and then we'll do the same with the third. As you say you can use um, one plain plank of wood but this is a great way to use up some leftover smaller pieces of wood and it just gives that extra Effect when we sand it down later. So there we go, hot glue again, and then we'll up this to the other two, and then we'll push it face down again to keep them um, nice and tight together at the front on the front face. There we go. leave that to dry for just a minute or two and then we're ready to paint. So the paint I'm using it's actually it is a wood paint but you can use any paint really that you have paint on it. Water-based is always better we like a, a water-based paint it just makes washing the paint brushes out a lot easier and you can see here barely got any paint, um, you know, just a spoonful really and we're going to quite brush it on nice and loosely and lightly and we tend to brush with the grain of the wood, with the lines of the wood up and down this way. Keep going until you've got that surface done and then we do the same with the sides. Just get just a small amount on the brush and really spread it about, making sure um, you're getting it nice and blended in over the edges so we've got no lumpy bits sticking over the edges. So that we lay it down. So, oh, I painted the back first, so that was the back, and now I'm turning it over. And so this is the front face where we're going to have the lettering.
And you could leave the ends um, unpainted if you like, but these ones are a bit uneven coloured, so I'll give them a paint. Blot that in so you can get a little bit more paint on than we had before and really dab it in to get into the into the little gaps there. And then we'll just go over the edges and blend them in to make sure we haven't got any lumps of paint there. It's a bit of a messy process, so wear gloves if you want to wear gloves, but as I said, I always use water-based paint, so some warm soapy water, it always comes off. Then finally, with quite a dry brush, just blend everything in nice and neatly together. And as you can see, I've hardly used any paint at all there. And you've got some for the next project. Clean the brush off in nice soapy water. And so after a couple of hours, this is nicely dried. Leave it overnight if you feel that's necessary. And it depends. Read what it says on the tin, really. And then we get some sandpaper and... Just give it a good old sand. Again, with the grain, sand it as much or as little as you like. I like to sand the edges really well. It gives it a nice framing effect then if we take um, most of the paint off around the edges. And then as we've added the three pieces of wood together, it just gives a really nice effect. A bit of a palette ageing effect there. Just sand away until you feel you've got the effect you like. Some of the um, the knots of the wood will come through and it'll make it look even more beautiful. There we have it, all complete and lovely and we're ready to add some lettering. I printed out um, some lettering I wanted and for this you print it so that you actually see it you don't print it in reverse like some images that we do so for this it's going to be amazing <laughs> so make sure it fits your sign what we have to do on the other side is scribble all over where the lettering is I often find this easier if you put it up into the window scribble on the back side of it and then what we're going to do is take this in place ideally with a little bit of uh, masking tape tape it in place and then we're going to trace around the outside edges of all the the writing here. So take a sharp point, you can use a ballpoint pen or any pencil and just go around all the lettering like this. It can take a little time but it's worth it because it means you get that nice effect. So there you have it, the letters are transferring underneath. It's the old fashioned way but it's a good way. I find it works really well for lettering like this. So nearly there, it does take a little while but we'll get there. Once complete, just remove the paper template. See, we should use masking tape here. I used double-sided and it got a little stuck, but there we go. It's all good. And so you can see a lettering. If there's any little bits missing, just add them in there with the pencil. Or I, I quite like with my lettering to sweep off the page, off the, off the sign. So I add those little lines in. Okay, so onto the acrylic paint. 
uh, with the paintbrush. So I like to use a really fine, nice, thin paintbrush and some black acrylic paint. You can see here you hardly use any at all, you, so you can get the smallest tube you need. And you simply just paint within the lines. You just paint all in there, slowly and steady. Follow in the lines and then fill the lines in till you get to the end. It's rather therapeutic, I think. I love doing this bit. So you just keep going until you get to the other end, till you're happy with it, basically. A lot of people prefer to use a Sharpie or a permanent pen for this, but I like to use the paint. And at this point, um, you can give it a nice spray of varnish if you like. I'm going to add a, just a little bit of foliage and a little bit of detail with some string and some greenery there. So here we'll use the glue gun and first of all we'll take the string. This is a nice string with a little bit of sparkle in. We'll add a bit of hot glue, stick the uh, string down and then we're going to wrap it. Keep going until you feel there's enough. And then we'll use this string as a little hanger. So we'll take the hot glue again and tap some at the top. And first of all, I'll, I think I'll just give it a little glue at the back so it's all stuck in place still. And then we'll glue it as the hanger and glue it over the other side. Get it to the length you feel you'd like and then add a bit of hot glue again and then we'll repeat the process and wrap around again. Just the last bit of glue and there we go. I quite like it like this, quite simple, a bit rustic, ready to hang on the wall but if you add, want to add a little extra detail we can add some greenery, some foliage. So I've cut a little, a couple of little sprigs off my giant sprig there and I quite fancy them down in the corner down here but you could do a symmetric shape at the top there with some berries and a bow in the middle but I'm going to pop mine here and I've got another couple of little berries to add in and then I'll add a little bow as well. Use any ribbon of your choice and just um, do a couple of little loops and glue them together or alternatively if you've got a little bow that you like or you buy one in the shop you can add that to there or you might find a fully made little sprig of something already with a bow that you can just add on to your sign. The possibilities are endless and um, the words are endless if you have a look on Pinterest or anywhere, goodness me, you'll get a whole array of ideas there. Amazing.
How did everyone get on? Good, I hope. So here's my finished one from today. I think this technique works really well when you've got um, lettering that's really bold and flowing and you can use the paint in to get a really nice, really nice finished result there. And um, I do a lot of other different designs um, when um, painting my signs and things. And so when you want something a little bit more detailed, this technique here, it's a little bit wibbly wobbly <laughs> as such. Um, and so not so keen when I use this technique on there. So I have another technique um, for making my signs. And for that one I use Mod Podge. And on the next video I'll show you how to make these ones. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye.